everybody, it's Allie, and welcome to my YNR chat for Sunday, February 13th. Well, it's been a week of surprises, many, many surprises, and the biggest surprise to me was how completely not surprised all of you were <laughs> about Kane's death. I, I, I completely did not see it coming, and apparently I was alone, <laughs> completely alone. I mean, granted, I don't really like to see storyline spoilers, so even if you guys knew that Kane was gonna die, I, I appreciate that you did not tell me, <laughs> because I like surprises, and I, I like having authentic, genuine reactions to what's going on on the show. I want to have emotional reactions. That's why I watch it. I don't like it when the storyline is just predicted. I know what's going to happen, and then I can't really get into it, but I love casting updates. I, If I had known that Daniel Goddard had been let go from the show, I definitely wouldn't have been so caught off guard as I was, and I would not have looked like as much of a fool as I did, <laughs> being apparently the only one in the world who didn't know. Um, back in the day, I, I would just pick up a CBS Soaps In-Depth magazine, and I'd flip through the comings and goings, and at least I would know who was coming and who was going, but in today's internet world, I, I guess I, I kind of feel like there should be some website or place that I can go online to get casting updates, but I don't know where that is because I've been out of the loop for so long. I do this vlog just to give my reactions on the storylines. I don't keep up with the community and what's going on behind the scenes nearly as much as other people do, so my question to you is... What's the best way to get casting and show updates without getting storyline spoilers? Please leave me a comment and let me know. Where's the best, like, what's your secret little gem place that you go to that I can go to now to, to at least stay somewhat informed because I feel like kind of a tool. Um, <laughs> that being said, I am actually really, really glad that YNR backed off of the Kane death storyline this week because last week was so emotionally draining that I just needed a week off. I just, I needed some time <laughs> to recover from all of that and to be honest I was expecting that this week, this last week, that we would jump right into the funeral. I figured it would be all Kane all week. We'd be having tons of long, drawn out, red eyed goodbyes to Kane. And instead, we seem to have gotten a little reprieve, <laughs> which I quite appreciate. Um, and the what little we did see uh, as follow up to Kane's death was was very mature, for lack of a better word. I, I Lily is being so strong right now, which is so much more than I was expecting from her. I almost feel like I underestimated her. She's being so much stronger than I expected her to be. She's mourning the loss of her husband, but at the same time, she's also marinating in this idea that, in this reality, that the husband that she knew and loved never really existed. In reality, Cain was never really the person that she thought he was, and their marriage was never what it looked like from the outside. I mean, you know, Lily and Malcolm and Neil, they're all going through these family photos. 
this week and I think that that was when it really started to sink in for her when that point really became um, drove home for her that it was all kind of a facade. I'm not saying that Lily and Kane weren't in love. I mean that was the one thing that they had that was constant. There was no question that they loved each other but there was just this you know these lies that were just overshadowing the whole thing that Lily didn't even know were there at the same time and so you know it's um it's been a rough week, but it's also, I think, Lily's coming to terms with it in a very, in a very natural way. And, um, I think the best moment for the winners this week was when Malcolm and Lily had some private time together. Malcolm took the time to reassure her in a world where she feels like she can't believe in anything, that she can believe in him. She can believe in Malcolm. She can believe in Neil. She can believe in Devon. She can believe in her babies. There are things that she has in her life that will be constant and will be a comfort to her. And even Daniel stopped by to talk with her. And I thought that they had a really good conversation. Um, Daniel's working out his own stuff right now with with this baby. You know, he as he's trying to talk, you know, to Lily about what's going on with her, he's also resolving his own feelings about fatherhood. You know, he's telling Lily that it was more important to Cain than anything than to, to be a great father and to make sure that his children were loved and cared for and that really, you know, it was as if he was talking about his, you know, his own problems, which of course he was. He's, he is sad that he's not in a place where he can get to know his daughter, but he also knows that she's in a better way. You know, she has two parents that are loving and doting and had a huge party for her this week and I thought that was a really nice moment between Daniel and Lily, and Lily has everyone there for her right now. She's got a ton of support, and a, a lot of people are co coming by just to help her have these healing moments, and I think she's getting there, because for as much as Lily hurts right now, and as much guilt as she feels right now, she will evolve on. She will evolve past this, and, and life will move on, and she'll be okay again. And, and so will Sophia. <laughs> right now, all Sophia can feel is that her decisions may or may not have affected Kane's outcome. It's the only thing she can see. She just can't shake this feeling that she's responsible for Kane's death which is a huge burden to carry, and Malcolm is doing almost nothing to reassure her that that's not the case. Malcolm, of all people, should know how it feels to keep secrets and to have regrets, yet he's still turning his back on her at the time when she needs him the most. So I don't know what that says about their relationship. Neil's the only one who is empathizing with her right now. And Neil is so straight-laced. He's the straight one. Malcolm's like the crazy wild guy. You know, it's almost surprising that Neil's not the one that's blaming Sophia for what happened to Kane and Lily. But he's not. Neil's the one that's being understanding. And Malcolm's kind of being the jerk. And here we have... <laughs> The beginnings of a triangle. Neil and Sophia and Malcolm. It's coming up. The triangle will be here. I'm feeling it. I'm looking forward to it. I think it will be explosive. <laughs> because, honestly, even if Malcolm doesn't want Sophia anymore, <laughs> he damn sure does not want Neil to have her. Well, the YNR gods giveth and they taketh away. <laughs> the worst kept secret in Genoa City this week was Chance is alive. Oh, yes. Chance is back. He has a new beard. <laughs> and he has a half a liver to give. <laughs> you know, the week started.
started out like such a strange mix of sad and wonderful. And it was equal parts of both. Seeing everyone's reaction to Chance still being alive, second chance, you know, there was this hope there that was coming in on the tail of, of absolute devastation with Kane's death. And especially Jill. I, Jill was like a sparkling diamond gem, sparkling and shining as the rough waters of life flowed over her, <laughs> just flowed right over her. I, I love Jill right now. I love her so much. Her hair is really great <laughs> right now and her outfits have been a cut above <laughs> and I love seeing her softer side not just seeing her bickering with Catherine every week week after week I love seeing her softer side and when she cries it just gets me in a very Victor kind of way. So when Victor cries, I'm crying. That's my cue. And when, when Jill is just weeping these tears of sorrow and joy, it's getting me too. I, I feel like Jill is, she is gone through the ringer. She's still going through the ringer and she's got more through the ringer to come. The joy of being newly married and the sorrow of Kane's loss and worrying about Chance and we all know what's coming up on, you know, on the horizon for her. It, it's, it's such a mix and I really have, I enjoyed that this week and I wanted to focus in on that a little bit because I just, um, I just think it's such a pleasure to watch her. Now seeing Chloe's reaction <clears throat> to Chance's aliveness was like really very completely opposite. She had the complete opposite reaction. Now, first of all, <laughs> Chloe kind of bullied her way into getting the information the chance was still alive from, from Heather. And, and let me tell you guys, Heather loved being the one to tell Chloe that chance was still alive. No doubt about it. No question about it. Heather knew something that Chloe didn't know. And she loved having, just for that moment, hanging that little piece of information just above her head and dangling it and saying, how much do you want it? How much do you want it? Ugh. <laughs> it's a good thing later in the week Chloe got plenty of jabs back into Heather um, because that was just ridiculous. Um, and Chloe's reaction was very bitter. Chloe's in a very bitter place right now. As glad as she was to learn that Chance was alive, she also realized that all of the mourning that she did for him was completely in vain. All of those tears shed in vain. And in a way, I think Chloe just sees this as one more lie, you know, pi piling on top of a, a, a mountain of lies that she's been told. And I'll talk more about Chloe and all that later. Nina at the hospital was the greatest love of all. <laughs> Nina was just such a proud mom. Her and her two boys, you know, having having her sons in the same room together under the same roof, even though it was, you know, horrible circumstance, you could just feel it from her that she, you know, that was a, a good moment for her. And as worried as Nina was about her two boys, she had this feeling, you could feel it, I felt it as a viewer, that everything was going to be okay. Just, uh, this is a moment where they're all coming together and everything's going to be okay. Because also, t too many of the puzzle pieces had started to fit neatly into place that, you know, y nothing could go wrong. This is clearly, everything's going to go right here. Ah, everything's right with the world. It was very that. Even the fact that Ronan 
Ryan's doctor ended up being Nate Hastings. Pfft. Little Nate. <laughs> little Nate. You guys. <laughs> I remember him running around as a little kid. Little Nate. Now all of a sudden, Surgeon Nate. <laughs> Dr. Nate Hastings. Uh, you know, that, that, was, that was a surprise and a good surprise. And, oh my goodness, you guys. Philip <laughs> flew back to Genoa City from Australia when he heard about Kane, and conveniently, he was able to be there just in time for Chance's surgery. What are the odds? <laughs> Plus, uh, Philip's hair is looking so much better. So much better. And overall, Philip annoyed me so much less <laughs> than he usually does. Really, I think so much of my opinion of Philip has centered around him and his horrible, bad hair, and somehow this week he got a haircut, <laughs> and all of that started to melt away. All of the bad feelings just melted away, and it was nice. Yes. And <laughs> we got to see, this is my favorite part of the whole thing, we got to see another, yet another classic Catherine talking to God, bullying him around moment. <laughs> Bossing him around because she's the queen, she's the duchess. Those moments, those are always my favorite. It, they're always thoroughly enjoyed. And this time it was right after Chance got out of surgery successfully. And Catherine just looked up and said, keep up the good work. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> I just, I don't know what it is about that, but those are just the classic little heartwarming moments. I love seeing Catherine uh, talking to God. So, um, all of the stars were aligning perfectly. Everything about this, perfect. Until <laughs> Nate, little Dr. Nate, runs in at the very end of Wednesday's show and says very frantically to Nina, who's waiting about news, to hear news about Ronan, he says to her, he's gone. And, uh, <laughs> you guys, I thought for sure that YNR had put Ronan in the ground, right next to Kane. I thought, oh my gosh, they are gonna bury him. Seriously, after me being so blindsided last week about Kane, I just thought, well, that figures. I thought Ronan was dead. Dead, dead. <laughs> Uh, that just shows I'm, 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 be I'm being very Chloe right now. I'm expecting the worst because no, Ronan is not dead. We don't know where the heck he is. Where the heck is Ronan? Where the heck is Ronan, you guys? How weird. I was like, I was just, again, this is another moment of me totally not expecting what I got. You know, I keep settling in and thinking I'm going to know what's coming next. And then Weiner just jerks the rug out from under me because apparently the FBI swooped in and um, took Ronan away right after the surgery, leaving everyone, including me, completely stunned. And both Chloe and Philip seem to think that Ronan <sighs> planned this whole thing, that it was some big scam just so that he could take Chance's liver and run. And I love a good conspiracy. But I just don't think so. I don't, I just don't see how that would be possible. You know, I think that Ronan has a very, very dark, dark, dark side. But I don't believe that he would just intentionally get close to Nina just so he could screw her over. That doesn't seem right. Something about that doesn't fit. It, that would be such a long, long strange, strange grift to get a liver. 
you know, that doesn't, that doesn't quite fit with me. But what other explanation could there be? The only thing that I can even think is that maybe the FBI got word that Ronan was in some kind of danger, and so they had to get him out of Genoa City for his own safety so that he can still testify at the trial? That's the only thing I can think of, because otherwise I'm left completely stunned. What else could it be? I don't know, you guys. Leave me a comment. Let me know. What are your theories? Where the heck is Ronan? Chloe is just so disillusioned right now. In many ways, she's taking Kane's death worse than Lily. She, she's just been yanked around on a string way too many times by way too many men, and now she just doesn't believe in love anymore. It's sad. You know, the, the, the thing that bothers me most about all of this is that she was ready to give up on Kevin so quickly. Just like it was nothing special. Okay, yes. The Gianna situation sucks. There's just no two ways about it. But Kevin was only trying to be a good guy by trying to help out a woman who he used to be in love with, a woman who he used to be married to, and I think that says a lot about his character, the fact and, and his loyalty that he would want to help her out that much that much. And it had only been like two weeks. <laughs> And Chloe was ready to throw in the towel. How special can this relationship be if she's ready to give up on it so quickly? I, it, that bothers me. And I honestly think, just from my own personal experience, that some people create problems for themselves to keep themselves occupied so that they don't have to think about real issues. And I love Chloe. Don't get me wrong, I really love Chloe, but I am so not that person, and I am so not into people who do that. There are enough problems without you needing to go and create them for yourself. You know, I, I just, I feel like as soon as Kevin realized that the situation with Jana was jeopardizing his relationship with Chloe, he fixed it. He told Jana the truth. And Chloe didn't even appreciate that whatsoever. He, I think that Kevin has done everything he possibly could do. I think that he did the right thing. I mean, we all know that Jana was faking it, but even if she wasn't faking it, it would be unfair of him to continue to lead her on. I think Kevin did the right thing in telling the truth, and I'm really, you know, I'm really sad that Chloe couldn't see that. Did you guys see Jana's face? When Kevin, like, when she realized that Kevin was about to tell her the truth, <laughs> she had this look on her face like, doomsday, it's over, I'm not ready for this, but it happened, there's nothing she could do, he told her the truth, and <laughs> Jana, her line of reasoning in response to Kevin telling her the truth was like she basically already knew. I'm kind of surprised that Kevin didn't guess that she was faking it the whole time because if if she truly lost a whole year of her life she would have a ton of questions for him about everything not just them the, the only thing she even cared about was the fact that she and Kevin weren't together anymore I mean if you lost a whole year of your life you'd think you would be like <gasps> you know I mean it would be absolutely devastating not just you know can we get back together <laughs> So, I don't know. I feel like um, the only, that's the only thing she really cared about. And I guess to answer all of the questions about Kevin, she just decided to go directly to Chloe. Which, let me tell you, <laughs> Jana confronting Chloe at the Chancellor House was the best that Jana has been in a long time time that there was something about those see that scene I don't know if it was the actress doing something different or if it was me but Jana rocked my world in that scene with Chloe it was awesome because I think because like all of these months that Jana has been ticked off about Kevin and Chloe getting closer everything that she's done to express her 
dissatisfaction with this has been very subtle or very a beating around the bush, like little things to jab at Chloe and Kevin or call in CPS. Like she's done all of these sort of um, roundabout things to, to, to get back at those two. But this time she just blew up. She just went over to Chloe and she was like, back off my man, bitch. <laughs> and it was like no two freaking ways about it. She was assertive. And she was scary. I mean, there was a look in her eyes that was, I wouldn't want to mess with her. I mean, it might make me feel enough to back off Kevin after dealing with Jana because it was it was good. And and to top it all off, ugh, she knew exactly what buttons to push of Chloe's because she said something to her like I don't know. She accused her of having the kiss of death because all of her exes were now dead. And that was the right button to push at exactly the right time. That was that hurt Chloe really badly. And oh, it was just good. It was good. I think it planted that seed of doubt in Chloe's mind. And I mean, oof, Jana got her point across. Man. <clears throat> Man. Oh, and then she said at the end, she she throws this in for good measure. If anything happens to Kevin. I'm holding you responsible. <laughs> As if like Chloe, like making Chloe feel like she truly had the kiss of death. Like she was just toxic to people. I, ugh, man. Mm, it was good stuff. I, it was really good stuff. Except that now like Chloe's mind is a total train wreck. So many emotions going on in her head. Too many to count. And she's bitter now, she's distrustful now, and it's hard seeing Chloe like that, you know, because she's usually someone who seems very open, and now she, you can just see her before your very eyes just closing off. But she should, she should feel assured. Chloe should start to feel assured that there is still at least one good man <laughs> out there in the world. Murphy, my man, Murphy, gave all of the girls in his house a box of chocolates for Valentine's Day. Mm, wasn't that sweet? <laughs> I love this man. I love Murphy with all of my heart. All of my heart. And I feel like, in my opinion, Catherine had the very best Valentine's date. Even if it was ice fishing. <laughs> I love Valentine's Day in Genoa City, especially when we get to have a party with formal attire. <laughs> I love all the outfits. I love all the decorations. Gloria totally knows how to throw a party. Ugh, and it was so good to see her. I love Gloria. And it was it was just a joy watching her hand deliver all of her puppy love invites to all of the major players in Genoa City. Just button right into their house. Like she she just has the gall to go right up to the, the Newman Ranch, knock on every single door and hand them an invite. I love that for of about her. She's bold, she's brash, she's sassy, and they're doing it for the dogs. <laughs> Her and uh, <clears throat> Count Jeffrey Bardwell. Yeah, right. And his childhood pup, Scruffles. <laughs> you can just see Jeff with like a little, like, wimpy dog, like maybe a poodle or something. <laughs> I could just see that of him. Um, <clears throat> Gloria had Glowworm decorated so adorably, and she flounced around in her fuchsia, flower petal looking fluffy dress. <laughs> it was lovely. And Gloria had the personality to be able to inspire people to come out, you know, to, to, to put their blues aside for one night and to come out to, to a party. I just love that about her. Even Chloe and Nikki managed to come out to the party and they were like dragged kicking and screaming and I love these two ladies <laughs> being bitter side by side. Chloe and Nikki, there's something about it that's just very charming to me and I 
just about gagged when Nikki said, hey, at least you can drink. Pfft. Amen. <laughs> hear you Nikki for real I thought that was a really cute and funny little moment Chloe looked really good in her silver asymmetrical outfit Chloe's doing a lot of asymmetrical lately and she had some puppy sleeves early in the week she's being you know very avant-garde with her uh, with her fashion choices lately and Nikki well first also let me back up to Chloe because it is gonna be really really fun next week, probably on Monday, to get to see Kevin and Chloe trapped together in the upstairs office, <laughs> by helped along by Cupid's assistant, Gloria. I loved seeing her with the keys, just, I did it, you know, her and Catherine working together to get the couple back together, that was really cute. Well, Nikki, I thought, um, was gorgeous. Nikki is just blowing me away this week. She just looks good. She had on this, like, long, like, scarlet red fur scarf sort of thing. It was beautiful. It was, it was just gorgeous. She looked like a g gorgeous fairy godmother. Valentine fairy godmother. I just loved it. I'm her hair is again in a really good place she's having these huge curls in it and she has a nice little figure too Nikki is looking rocking right now and I in the fall I was complaining about what a fashion nightmare Nikki had become and now she is back on top I am loving it and I can only hope and pray that YNR is able to do the same for Deacon <laughs> I will resist ragging on him <laughs> for one vlog, one um, one chat, uh, but it was nice of him to send those anonymous flowers to Nikki as though she couldn't guess who they were from. And it was also nice of Victor to stop by Catherine's house just to let everyone know that he didn't send those flowers to Nikki. <laughs> Jerk? What was up with that, Mr. Jerk? He just went over there just for that? Not bloody likely. I didn't send them. Oh, what a jerk. Um, I, but uh, he made up for it. <laughs> because it was so sweet to see the big man, Victor Newman, with these two white, fluffy teddy bears. <laughs> for summer and faith. Adorable. I squealed with joy just at that juxtaposition of Victor Newman and two little tiny white teddy bears. <laughs> squealed with joy until he decided to uh, walk those toys uh, over to, to Nick's house and catch an eyeful <laughs> of Nick and Diane making cream of Valentine Day soup. <laughs> It was bad. Bad, bad, bad. Nick, come on, man. You should have learned by now that you should tack a curtain up over that side window <laughs> because plenty of naughtiness has been seen through that pain. I don't know about you guys, but I am completely done mourning Nick and Phyllis's relationship, their breakup, because Phyllis and Jack together... It's just so right. It is so right. Phyllis and Jack 100% all the way. Phyllis surprised Jack this week with a whale watching cruise <laughs> for their valentines. And even better, this was priceless, Jack surprises Phyllis when they come back to the room. He has a little in-room treat for Phyllis. As soon as they open the door, <laughs> You can see that there's like a banner on the bed and there's dinner sitting there and champagne, but Phyllis <laughs> manages to see Spot and make a beeline for the piece, this tiny little jewelry box sitting <laughs> right next to the champagne. Like there's all this other stuff going on in the room and she spotted that jewelry box at like 10 paces. I was pretty impressed with her. <laughs> I mean, really? It was good. Um, it was funny. 
So back at the ranch, Sharon and Adam also had a private Valentine's Day celebration and Sharon's dress, the long red dress, she looked good enough to unwrap. I mean, it was wow. <laughs> Adam was like bling. <laughs> I mean, he could hardly contain himself. It was awesome and funny. And, you know, if, if faith weren't a factor, I everything would just be so different with Adam and Sharon because they have such a good chemistry. They had a good conversation this week. And Adam just was reflecting to Sharon about how she's the only one who's supported him, has believed in him in his life, and she's the best thing that's ever happened to him, which is true, um, and, and how much he, he wants their future together to be just perfect which is a totally unrealistic expectation, but I mean, if who needs real proof that Sharon didn't kill Skye if you can just manufacture it? Hey, why not? I mean, props to Adam for taking charge of his destiny there. I mean, he came up with a sketchy <laughs> plan B when all else fails. I don't know. It took me like half of the week to figure out what the heck he was doing. I mean, he's like hacking into Sky's accounts. At first, I thought he was just looking for more money, but apparently he's looking for more money and ordering expensive shoes to a, a P.O. box that I guess he set up to make it look like, like Sky is still alive. I mean, so if he can make it look like Sky is still alive, he can make all of these charges against Sharon go away. So he's taking charge of his destiny there. You can't deny it. Although, they may not need it. They may not even need it because <laughs> Phyllis and Jack are on the case. <laughs> I love it. And in between lovemaking sessions, uh, Phyllis and Jack managed to find some evidence that not only is going to free Sharon, but nail Victor to the wall. I'm totally shocked because Victor never pays for his crimes. He never pays for the horrible things that he does to people. And this time, he's been caught red-handed on video in Hawaii on top of the volcano on the night of Sky's death. Tch. Smile! Gotcha! Okay, well, <laughs> that's it for me for this week. It's been good chatting with you guys. I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are about this week's show. I'm dying. I always love reading your comments. I don't think I had a chance to, I was kind of bad at <clears throat> responding to them last week. I was kind of busy, but I'm always reading and I'm always shocked. You guys, you guys are like awesome. You increase my love of the show so much. So please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think is going on. Let me know what your opinion is. I'm totally jazzed to read them and um, <clears throat> let's see what else. I'll be back next week to chat about the show, but if you want to check up on me in the meantime, you can go to the website at yrchatblog.blogspot.com. If you're listening to the podcast version, um, this is that's a really good place to leave your comments. I want to start hearing from some people on the that are listening to the podcast. Where are you? Leave me some comments. <laughs> <laughs> I want to feel it. I want to feel the love. Uh, and the people who are watching the video on YouTube, oh my gosh, I love you. I really love you. <laughs> you're, you're the best. Um, and I'm totally excited about hearing your comments this week. Oh, and I made a Facebook fan page. I know how much people like to use Facebook. I'm not a huge Facebooker. I don't really use it that much, but <laughs> I kind of felt like, hey, you know, why not? Maybe I, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to be better at my social networking. That's kind of like one of my my resolutions. I'm going I'm to give it a shot. So I made a Facebook fan page and I will try to update it if you are interested in adding it, fanning it. So I'll put the uh, the link in the description of the video or if you listen to the podcast, I'll put it on the website so that you can check that out and maybe communicate with me throughout the week. Okay, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> uh, I love you guys. Have an awesome week and I'll see you next time.